Hello, my name is Shane Love. I'm an engineer with Motioneering. In our last chapter, we talked about damping systems in tall buildings. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the motion of bridges and how damping systems can help to reduce these motions. On pedestrian bridges, we're often concerned about pedestrian-induced vibration, which is basically vibrations caused by people walking across the bridge. Their footfalls produce vertical as well as lateral motions that we need to be aware of. Pedestrian-induced vibration is an important concept in the design of a pedestrian bridge because if people are on a bridge and a small group of walkers or joggers walks or jogs by and they can feel the bridge moving too much, this can cause them to A, question the safety of the bridge if it's moving a lot, or B, just disrupt their enjoyment of the structure as they can feel it moving around them. It might disturb them as they're looking over the viewscape of the valley or river below. If a bridge deck moves too much, one of the damping solutions we commonly employ is a tuned mass damper. And this is basically an auxiliary mass connected to the deck of the bridge using springs and dash pots, or kind of like a shock absorber in a car. If the bridge begins to bounce, this mass will begin to bounce, but out of phase with the motion of the bridge, and it imparts forces that oppose the motion of the people walking or jogging on the bridge. When a TMD is installed in a bridge, one of the most important but often overlooked aspect of commissioning that damper is performance verification. Performance verification implies that we do a number of measurements to monitor the motion of the bridge deck and the damper itself to make sure that everything is functioning as intended. When we do these measurements, often we're going to have a group of people or, or maybe a single person walk or jump across the bridge uh, to excite the bridge and then we can ensure that uh, things are moving and operating as intended. A bridge is often most susceptible to wind-induced motion during a stage of construction. For example, an arch before it's closed in is quite flexible as both ends of the arch can move. So it's important to consider these stages of construction as well and if there's potential for a windy day to get these arches moving in the wind, we need to apply a damping system to reduce this motion and make sure the structure is safe during all stages of construction and operation. The cables on a suspension or cable stayed bridge are often quite susceptible to wind-induced motion. On a windy day, you might be able to see some of these cables if you look up moving or oscillating on some of these bridges. To reduce the motion of these cables to make people know that the bridge is safe, sometimes we'll apply stock bridge dampers or tune mass dampers or struts to the base of the cable to ensure that the amplitudes don't uh, grow too large to be problematic. For long span bridges that often have towers from which cables are attached, there can be concern that the towers themselves can move under the wind laterally back and forth or side to side. So what we need to do is make sure this doesn't happen because this is not good for the design. So we can install tuned mass dampers or sometimes tuned sloshing dampers, which are basically pools of water at the top so that when these towers do move, they force these masses from the water or the TMD mass to oscillate out of phase with the motion of the tower, which opposes its motion and also opposes the wind loads that are applied to that structure. Bridges are just one of the type of structures that are susceptible to footfall vibration. In our next chapter, Julia is gonna talk about floors. I'm Shane Love, an engineer with Motioneering and I look forward to speaking with you about your project.